Hey, I'm Kev Care, Mr. Come, welcome back to MotoGP 18, where Mario didn't quite grab a podium last time out in Jerez, and he has lost the championship lead, but not by a lot. Can he regain it round the Bugatti Le, Le Mans circuit in France? Now here goes Mario then for the first of three possible qualifying efforts, as he has the best out of his for 36.7 on a circuit where he normally does okay. This Bugatti Le Mans circuit. Looks like he's also rejoining where in the middle of traffic. Well, he shouldn't be able to get in the way a lot. As he's matching Marquez in the first sector. And he's come off the back of a decent performance in Spain. Perhaps a, dis a bit disappointed to push on a bit more in the middle part of that race. No, he definitely was there for the take with Baldas I just controlling that pace of the markers. And those two battling each other before the Oliveira train came rolling in. Or well, the KTM train, shall we say. We've been there uh, with Bagnaia as well. Conceding to his teammate in the end where they are really putting all the resources in the Mario train after his start to the season. Sure, Bagnaia might be a bit disappointed in that decision, but that's what the team have decided. As you saw Luca Marini do a superb support role after his superb qualifying. Just a shame he didn't score a top five that he maybe deserved. Or top seven at least. Finishing down in ninth. But we're not, not having a bad lap, shall we say. Maybe not pushing on as much as he would like. That first right hand is so treacherous. Like that double right in a res. So easy to mess up that first right, but 37.5, that's a decent banker. Now he just needs to go at least a second faster. Round this next lap. That's all, oh, he's got it a bit right. For the fast right. Not bad through the chicane. Just a bit too much over the curb stoke. Apparently he's almost three tenths of a second up though for that first set to not bad at all. As you turn right, turn off the famous Circuit de la Soir layout. Into the Bugatti Le Mans circuit, which has quite some tasty motorbike racing over the years. Actually held an F1 Grand Prix here 67 years ago. But not many drivers were impressed. As McDonald two tenths of a second up, now has Jorge Navarro battling him. Might get some slipstream off the Grissini rider though, down this back straight. It doesn't look like he will just. You go into the left. A bit wide for the right, he's just going to drop back. Now everyone by. For another run at Paul. As Olivia grabs it with a 35 second. Seven, shall we say. By two seconds ahead of Mario now. He shots outside of the top ten. So it shows you the task he's got ahead of him. It's not going to be like a res where somehow that banker time still got him a top ten. Still don't quite understand that. But at least he was on pace for 36-7 on that lap. Before Grassini came rolling in. To go into the left, so easy to do that, or break yourself. Okay, but so here goes Mario. Then he's been back to the pits after that fall, that silly fall, getting on the power. He's got two laps still in the bank to try and beat or match that. 35-7 from Oliviera. Let's see if he can do it on this lap. But once again, he's gone wide in that left hander. So he's already lost a couple of tenths. But a nice smooth exit on the first chicane. Here's the personal best. Two tenths on Oliviera. Playing a bit of a wider line. But then he was going to get him on the power a bit earlier. So go into the hairpin. Ever tightening that hairpin. So you've got to be careful on the exit not to run too wide. Now he's eight tenths down on the Viera. You can see the sector where he's losing out then. That second sector again. Not kind to Mario. 
as we go down the back straight. It's better lots of slip streaming heading into this chicane. Could be a passing spot in the race. If you manage to hook that up right, but you're more looking to set it up through there into this right hander. As he's 1.2 back of the Vieira. Going for a high 36 at the moment. Low 37. It's an improvement, but it's not a good improvement. Not good enough. As you go through the double right. Nicely on the power. 36-6. So he gains back time in that final set. So he's just outside the top 10. And now he's got one lap. Make or break this lap. For a decent qualifying. As he gets it stopped into the left. Nicely on the power through the right as well. And up. Quarter of a second up on Oliviera. It's going to hope this lap traffic does not block him or get in his way. Just gives him slipstream down this straight. And down the back straight as well. He's only lost half a second in this sector. That's not too bad. Let's see if he's getting the slipstream stream then. Down this back straight. That rider shouldn't be interfering with him too much. It's all no Mayo's outbreaks himself. As he is second back, it's still a personal best. Why has he blown it? As he goes into the final sector. Gets on the power nicely. And then through the double right. Picks on the power nicely. Gets a good toe. Was that an improvement? I think it was just. Uh, so there we go, grabs pole by a tenth ahead of Bagnaya and Binder, then Baldazai to win the last time out. The championship leader leads the second ahead of Marquez and Sharotta. Then it's Mayor ahead of Verge and Eco with a great qualifying on the third row, and all Spaniard for ahead of Jorge Navarro. Rounds out the top ten ahead of Pacini and Agata. Then it's Cortero McDonald on the fifth row alongside the home hero and Locatelli. Then it's Remy Gardner ahead of Samlos and Fanati, Corsi, Marini and Barbera round out the seventh row. Then it's Olandal, Jose Vinales, and Joe Roberts on the eighth row, where NTS had one of their best races last season. Then it's Danny Kent in the top 25 for once in qualifying, and his speed up ahead of Nakashima and Paoli. On the tenth row, Gonardo, Ben Snyder, and Manzi. And on the back row, it is Danilo, Corridin, and Fugadini. So for McDonald, he's got it all to do in the race. What can he achieve? So here's Mario running up on the fifth row, waiting for the lights to go. Out, there's a long wait there. On the French. And Mario with a decent start as well. Look at that. He's actually leapfrogged someone with his getaway with his launch. They're going to go around the outside of Riders into the chicane. So had to let them all bite as he rejoins down in 14th as Ben Snyder down. So trouble further down the field as Mayo's getting swarmed into the right hander by his teammate Luca Marini. Back going around the outside of his teammates, Marini. Well, look at he's going down the inside. Not an Italian sandwich. And he's not very good at being a fitting. Let's go downhill through the double right. Once again, Marini looking to go down his inside and push him out of the points. I thought you were meant to be supporting the number one rider, Marini. So he dives down the inside of Locatelli. Tries to it down the inside of Navarro as well through the chicane. Picking down the inside of Agata as well. Through the left. What the hell happened there? All I know is that Agata's held on. 
Clara has found a way, bye. And we end the opening that with everyone in one piece somehow. With Bagnaia leading ahead of Baldessari, Binder, Marcus and Oliveira. It's more down the inside of Navarro. Now looking to follow that up with a couple more passes. As he's gone very wide. Just about rejoins the track in one piece. As he's got Iku, he's got Agatha battling over 11th with him. But somehow he's made it all the way through. Into that place and runs wide for the left hander. As he tries to set up a good run out that corner. So he'll be getting a slip stream from Agatha at least. Into the double right. As here come the teammates, Lowe's and Ika. Lowe's down the inside, up into 11th. Well, there's a bit of a gap emerging with the top 10, but Donald wants to clear these riders quickly. Well, that comes a real gap. As well, a couple of riders down in front. But on up into ninth. As he's got Pacini in front. Oh, he did. Now he's down the inside of the Dino Vault. As we've got Cortoraro battling as well. The home hero being forced wide by Mayo. He's making up a couple of moves up into Sip. As he's head of Vergi, got Sharotta behind. He does the fast that 35 9. First guy into the 35s, head of Baldazari. 36 flat. As they go into the first chicane, so Mayo on the move. Had some unconventional passes, shall we say. It's been a bit aggressive as well. Not trying to be too aggressive, though. Maybe taking a bit too much curve on the outside there. But he should still hopefully be getting a toe from Shirotu. He's still in touch with the top four in front. So battling like a hell for the lead. Balazari, Marcus, Bagnaia, and Oliveira. Dawn Shirotu in tow. And Vergate. I won't forget about you, Zavi. And Quartaro and Pacini. To go down this back straight. They were breaking very hard into that left. Makes up so much time. As it's Brad Bindu who got caught up in that mischief. As McDonald takes a little look down the inside of the German. Maybe into the left. Schrotter holds on to fight for another day. For another lap. Let's go through the double right. And look at this run for Mayo. 35-7. That's the top four trying to make a break from the German. He's into the top five. As they're onto the fourth lap. It's like Mao's joined the party at the front. As he's three tenths behind his teammate, four tenths. As Oliviera leads. And about as Aria Marquez. Oh, just got to hook up these corners. He just can't get on the power though. Look at that rear. Does not like it at all. Well, we're through the double right though. Nice and smooth on the power. As we've got Navarro ahead of Cortero for ninth. Home hero dropping back then. After being on the edge of a top five just a couple of laps ago. Smayo's six cents behind his teammate. He's dropping back slightly. Been so close in the first sector. But he gains back in this last sector. They're using all of that curb and out turning the bike. As you go into the second half of the race, drive with another 35 7. One mere and Binder was who got caught on the instant earlier then. 
It's there down the order in the 20s. Don't know where Mario's going. Obviously found some grip on the runoff. Olivier trying to break away from this drastic battle for seconds. We know how strong that KTM can be in the second half of races as well. Three behind, they've got to take heed of that. They don't want the reigning champ to run away with this race. Another victory. So we've still got Shirotto in tow as well. As Mir battling into the top 20 almost. Hit a Danny Kent for 21st. As Madonna trying to push on, but just not able to close this gap. Come from slight attack from behind as well. From Sharotta. That's a bit impatient sitting behind now. McDonald. Uh, so the Malaysian down. It's Mayo taking that curb right into an extreme, no? He's, taken that, he's done that a couple of times. But good run out of the final corner. He sets a 36-3, a poor lap. But he's just four tenths behind Bagnaya. He's actually getting a bit close in this battle for the podium. Oh, now it's a superb exit from the chicane. He makes it three wide. Down the inside of his teammate, four third. Down the inside of Baldessari as well. Now he's on the tail of Marcus for second. He's trying to get on the tail of Oliviera for the lead. As well as he takes a look into the tight left hand and McDonald says, back off. Concentrating on in front, not what's happening behind me. As he gets a smooth enough exit onto this back straight. Might have to be careful his teammate though. Into the chicane. Donald holds him off. As he chooses wrong, does Bagnaya. McDonald dives down the inside of Marquez from nowhere. Surprised. The Mark VDS man is up into second while he's behind Oliviera. It's these two again. Perez all over again, but this time it's rolls for first as Oliviera gets a poor exit. Donald pulls out 35 1. Where's he done that? Done the fastest that. He's about to take the lead. And the pun on the lap of the race. And you may have seen Olivier's teammate Bindo went down. It's not his race at all for the South African. That's McDonald timed this right though. With two laps remaining, he's pulled the pin. And taken the lead from nowhere when it looked like Olivier was getting comfortable. Even with Marquez not far behind. What a ride this has been. From 15th on the grid, remember. Or the fifth row as well. Olivier with the dive from the other side of France. But he's just giving the toe to McDonald down this back straight. I know good McDonald is into the chicane. Oh, he's outbraked himself though. Holds on ahead of Marquez. This is where he surprised Marquez with his pass. Did it to Oliveira then. A bit sloppy though. Into the chicane as we head on to the final lap then. McDonald's going to lead ahead of Marquez, is he? Or not? Here comes Marquez with the dive. As we go on to the final lap, we've got a battle for the lead. Like a hell with Baldessari. Bagnaya and Sherrod is still involved. Oh, a race here in France. Let's go through the chicane. 
Not good enough on the power. And now the second set is always tricky for him. As he's four tenths ahead of Marquez. And he's got no front tyre apparently. He's got half the rear one though. That's good. But he just about gets on the power for this back straight. But this is the corner. The double right. Marcus will try and outbreak him like Olivier did on the previous lap. But this time McDonald defended the inside and he's got a best slip stream on the Mark VDS bike. As you go into the chicane. He does it again down the inside. Oh, breaks himself slightly. But he gets past Marcus and now you've got Baldessari queuing up behind him. They're all taking tickets. Have a go. And McDonald at the front of this train. But it looks like the San Marino ride is going to hold on, is he? Let's go through. Final double right. Holds the apex and takes victory. In France, what a sponsor is as well. His bike fell off in those last few laps. He got stronger. He found pace. Got a bit rough and tumble though. Near the end. That's, that might have been the best lap of the year for McDonald so far. That 35 one he produced to grab the lead from nowhere. While well, he wins ahead of Bowder's eye by three tenths. Bagnaia in third. Schrotter fourth. Verge fifth. And if the error. In sixth, did McDonald get a bit too clumsy with him? The same with Marcus. He's down in eight behind Pacini. Quartararo in ninth ahead of Navarro. Good points on home turf for the speed up rider. Then those ahead of his teammate Ika. One mirror recovers to grab some points in 13 of his early clash with Binder, Locatelli and Barbara grabs the final point ahead of Remy Gardner by almost two seconds. Looking further down, Binder recovered to 20th in the end behind his fellow countryman Odendal. Oh, you don't often say that in NTS ahead of a KTM. And further back, you've got Agatha in 22nd after having a good start. Round out top 30, Nakashima and it's Fugalini right at the back. So a race after losing the championship, Lee McDonald grabs it right back from Bowder's eye by two points. But it's still very close between the pair. The Vier drove Max slightly 14 points back. But we know the reigning champion is very strong at every circuit. Alex Mark is over a race win behind. 34 points behind. Is he out of it already? Maybe not after just five races, but... After a quarter of the season, you would expect him to be a bit closer to the Spaniard. The same for Bagnaya, down in fifth. Ahead of Verge's Binder drops outside of the top five. And those ahead of his teammate now up into 11th. Same for Navarro up to 12th. Rubica dropping down to 13th. Luca Marini down to 14th. Quarter up to 15th after a great point scoring day. Ahead of Locatelli, Corsi and Barbara. There's nine riders score points so far this season. Manzi up into the top 30. Same with Granado. But Danny Kent is in the wooden spoon spot. Two for McDonald, not a good qualifying, but definitely a fantastic race. As he's up to level 87 for brakes management, 88 for the Nagel, 86 for Ryan Person, 86 for throttle management, and a decent haul of development points and reputation earned. As Marcus beat Dovi and Rossi in MotoGP, in Moto3, Martin beat Bezecchi and Bastianini. Starting to see that MotoGP result is scripted. As you've got almost 8,000 development points. Can't do anything with the brakes. We could do something with the suspension, with the frame, or with the aerodynamics. But as I said, I don't think we need to do anything with the aerodynamics. Actually, we might have to increase top speed because that's where Mayo... He's kind of losing it a bit, and we're going to Majedo next time. So shall we increase the penetration through the air? And there we go. We've actually developed something other than the brakes for once. And next time, Mario heads to the fast and furious Italian circuit. The first visit to Italy of the season. Will he win round Majedo, grab his third victory of the season? Or will he have to really slug it with the likes of home heroes Baldazzari? If Bagnaya, if Marini is a teammate. Find out next time. Sound fortune. We'll find out then.